Uh, I think we've stumbled across a dinosaur footprint. Morning everybody, or afternoon, depending on what time you're watching this. Uh, first video, this is the Romford Fossil Hunters. I know what you're thinking, there's no fossils in Romford, but there is here in Whitby, and that's exactly where we are today. We're at Saltwick Bay, which looks something like this. We have to go down this path, and then some steps and more of a path down to the beach and then once we get to the beach we've got to get round the first headland you can see in the distance there just in sort of about that area there I've got to get round that headland so the tide is going out it's been going out for about an hour and a half and uh, once we get round there there's some areas we know which usually are productive with plant remains it's all lower middle Jurassic stuff, so uh, yeah, once we get down there and get round there, I'll uh, let you know if we find anything. Here we go. Fossils can be found on both sides of this beach, left or right. Obviously it's better left when the tide goes right out and exposes more that are not covered by all that nasty slippery green weed. You can even find them on the beach here if you look hard enough, but few and far between, very well picked. Again, we're going up to get right close to the cliff here for a second where it's safe above. There's no falls or nothing. It's not a dangerous part of the cliff. And then to get round that head ran, headland, uh, that's known as the nab. The bit looks like a submarine sticking up. Um, there is a sort of a shipwreck around that corner, or the remains of one anyway. And I'll show you that when we get there. Uh, I think we've stumbled across a dinosaur footprint. Um, we've seen some in real poor states. Someone looks like they've uh, had a bit of a chisel of it and they've took its middle toe out. I'll, I'll sort of trace it out for you. Um, when I can get there, hold on. Yeah, can you spot it? Can you see the dinosaur footprint? Right. Well, there she is. This here is the hill. Uh, there's the middle toe where a part of it's been broke off. There's the first toe. And the third toe broke off some time ago, but it's starting to get warm by the sea now. Uh, obviously, it's the, uh, the footprint was made on the other side of this grey rock when it was uh, all sandy and silty in a river delta. And uh, the indentation that was made in the rock was then silted in with a harder material, which, because it's gone harder than the surrounding rock, as it wears away, you end up with the imprint like that. Um, as you can see, this area is absolutely littered with uh, fallen bedrock. And there are probably hundreds, if not thousands, of dinosaur footprints yet to be discovered 
in amongst all this. Um, yeah, interesting stuff. As you can see, quite quite large chunks down here, and we're moving a bit rapid because uh, the tide is a bit slow going out today. But uh, we're sort of having to clamber in between all these really large rocks, and uh, we don't want to be dwelling underneath a cliff like that. So, catch you later. There's a lot of ammonites on this beach but you've got uh, some rock which is still in the form of a slate that is quite soft it's commonly called shale. Uh, it does preserve ammonites in terrific detail but the trouble is it still stays soft not quite plasticine but you know to give you an idea there's actually a piece sort of hiding with a seaweed over it there I don't know if you can see that but if I actually pull that out you can see how it's falling apart already, look, it's just, I can just break it up, like with my fingers. But the detail, if I'll get it out, look, look there's some there. You know, that bit just broke right off. I mean, look, that's a bit of ammonite there. And you can see that. You know, and then you pull all this out, and there's like a death bed of them. There's like loads of them next to one another. And, you know, some are quite large. That's uh, another piece there. I can sort of see them in there, but you know they're they're not a solid fossil. They're made out of the same stuff basically that the shower is. So they're they're not worth prepping or trying to save. Some people do. They you know dip them in varnish, encapsulate them in uh, some epoxy resin or something similar. Uh, you can do it, but personally I, I wouldn't bother. Um, yeah, and then sometimes, you know, when you're just looking, like I was just then, you just see a little shape in a rock, and it's a telltale sign that in there there is actually an ammonite. I don't know if you can see that, it's actually the shape of the keel just there. Um, see all those little lines there? That's the edge of it, and there's a bit of it there that's just been broken off and then it resumes about there. So if you give that a tap with an hammer, if you're lucky, that will actually uh, come out. So I'll open that one a bit later because we're in an area which is still a little uh, unstable and a lot of this fine stuff is still coming down. Um, but that's the sort of shape that we're looking at. They, they're just called a nodule. Um, it's a bit harder than that shell stuff I was showing you before, which just crumbles in your hand. This obviously you can crush it as much as you like. It ain't gonna come apart. And this is the sort of shape you're looking for. And if you cast your eyes on the floor here, you can sort of see straight away. There are, I mean, there's not millions of them about, but there's another one there. And again, there's a bit of an ammonite there. Oh, yeah, there he is. And there's another one hiding just in there. So again, another one worthy of a tap. 
Um, so once you, they're calling it getting your eye in. You've probably heard this before or you haven't. It basically means once you're looking for this sort of shape nodule, and then once you see that shape, and then you look straight at the beach, and then that's the sort of shape that you're looking for. So as you look around, you know, you actually do find them. Uh, there are some bigger ammonites, obviously, that are in the boulders here. That's a slightly different stone. Uh, we know they're here because there are parts of them pretty much everywhere. There's a section of one there, which is obviously starting to get a little bit bigger. See where it's broke. Um, I think that's a Dactyceris. It's like a local common ammonite in these parts. Um, but yeah, so just uh, keep looking and uh, keep searching. I mean, we're finding bits here, but this isn't the area we're at yet. The tide has only literally just gone out past this headland we need to get up there and round the corner um, past the little wreck that's there the remains of one and it gets to our little favorite spot where hopefully we're going to have some better finds so I'll come back to you a bit later just coming over the uh, bedrock coming up to the wreck now We're sort of pretty much level with the headland where the nab is which is the big bit of rock that sticks up there just spin you around and show you that is the nab and uh, this is obviously the bedrock we're walking on you have to be careful of the weed very slippery last thing you want to do is slip when you're white out here and uh, I said there was a wreck around the corner and just this is the corner we're going around when we started the video and there is the remains of the uh, the ship that once was I did know the name of it but its name escapes me probably throw it up in a title and uh, tides going out it looks like really fast now but it's not it's because it's flat bedrock and it does seem to go out really quick Pyrotized ammonite. Probably wondering why I've got this uh, litter picker stick. Believe me, when you spent three, four hours on the beach bending over, I don't care how old you are, your back hurts. Most of the stuff you're picking up is quite small. So, you know use one of these to pick it up, have a look at it and put it down again, saves all that bending obviously the beach has changed since we was here last been a real old turnover, all things smashed up, just got out of the summer season with the kids so uh, been heavily picked all over, but uh, still look, still find, I've proven already I've found some bits so yeah Early bird catches a worm, we're the first ones here when the tide's uh, retreating so it gives us a good uh, opportunity to find something where the tide may have revealed something. So yeah, carry on looking. I think this is a large section of an ammonite hiding under here. Again, thanks to my trusty stick, I'm able to grab it and bring it out. It's the telltale ribbon. Let's put it up here. 
have a closer look at it yeah see this these shapes here see these, these are obviously this has been smashed up and water worn I mean this is a large section of uh, ammonite in here um, yeah it obviously would be you know quite a large one and there's the other side of it and sometimes these polish up quite nice once you reveal them a little bit so I might take that and have a little gander at it you never know yeah what you got there oh yeah a bit of a partial or uh, I don't know Privatised stuff, yeah. It's one right at your feet, actually, right there. Large one. That's good. No, the other bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. look at that. That's yeah. Sure. The middle's gone out of it. That's a common thing, yeah. You get that soft rock, it just don't preserve at all. It should be sitting on the big one. Yeah. Imprints. Yeah, I think we're going to uh, sit on a nice dry rock here somewhere, have something to eat, and then uh, resume our hunting. So, it's the Rumford Fossil Hunters having something to eat. We won't video that. Don't you all to be vomiting, do it? So, Yvette's found a, a multi block. Quite a very large nodule, it's absolutely full. We need a very big hammer and a lot of patience to get through here. Some quite large ones in there as well by the look of it. That's a negative one. Yeah, yeah, we've got one just showing out just down here as well. Yeah, there's a couple over here. Might even be some verts in there for all we know. There's some other bits here, there's one on the top. Yeah, they're showing all the way around it. Uh, might be worth a little tap with the hammer so we can get out if it's too hard then obviously we won't but uh, yeah we'll film that one later on yeah we uh, got so carried away picking all the nodules up and all the bits and pieces I forgot entirely to do a lot of videoing ha 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 apologies for that but uh, what I'll do is we're on our way back to the site now so when I get there I'll lay everything out and then give you a proper little look at what we found um, well, a bad day considering, but uh, a little bit of a walk back, it's a bit shorter because we can go straight now because the tide is still out. Uh, but if we've got any more in the bag, it'll be too difficult to get back up the uh, side of the cliff with all the gear because, uh, yeah, we've got all the stairs and all that to go up. And we have to keep having little blows and breaks on the way back now. But no, we've yet found the best one today. Uh, quite jealous actually, don't tell her that, though, really. But um, yeah, I don't even know the name of a lot of these ammonites. I mean, I'm uh, still learning, really. Even though I've been doing it for years, I'm just uh, learning how to prep them and find them, not name them. That's another day. Anyway, uh, literally onward and upward, as they say, because we've got to go up the side of this. again here we are back at the caravan and uh, as promised we've sort of got everything out on the table so we can see uh, the bits and pieces that we've actually brought um, wife had a pretty good uh, discovery actually it's probably the best find of the day it's not complete ammonite but it's nearly all there but the size of it makes up for its lack um, but now I'll just sort of run it through uh, with you now uh, right so uh, this was a real big uh, chunk of um, heavily pyrotized rock. This light colour you see around the edge there, this uh, little iron pyrite, common name falls gold, comes up as silver or gold or can be any colour really. Um, but usually iron pyrite is a rusty colour, 
which are these little rusty colours, and I can make them out in there. Da, da, da. And at the top here, there's some rusty colours. Um, yeah, and obviously this was part of a very, very large ammonite, and it did preserve really well right in the top layers. Um, but obviously it don't preserve when it gets into this stuff. It's a bit too technical to sort of put it all on the video, but that'll clean up nice and make a little display piece anyway. Um, ammonites, the most common things that are around here. This one's got a bit of damage on it, but it's in the rock and uh, with an air pen you can work at this and actually uh, reveal it. Again, same again, literally a chip off the old block as they say. Um, most people just think that's a little tiny fragment of the shell just there, but that's actually an ammonite as well, which is hiding in there. So a little bit of teasing out again with the air pens. Air pens are a bit like a needle. Uh, tungsten carbide tips, very very strong uh, and you don't have to push hard with them, you just um, literally use them as uh, like a pen you let the tool do the job and uh, take some out. This is when you get individual ammonites uh, in, in rocks but occasionally you do get um, some which you do get multi blocks like this and as you can see there's quite a lot of different sized ammonites in there most of them haven't got centres there's a common thing around here when you get uh, some ammonites and that that get preserved, you know, they don't get centres. This one was heavily pyrotized to give it a bit of a smack of a rock to see what was inside. And this bit sort of flung off. And uh, you can see that sort of gold sort of luster that this has got. You know, that is the, uh, the false gold, that's the iron pyrite again. And obviously it's left its imprint there. And then when this one came off as well, um, inside you can clearly see there is uh, another one hiding in there so yeah a bit of pen work on this we'll sort of make a bit of a specimen out of it even the bit that come off has got tiny little fragments in it showing that there's some there's a tiny little one just at the top of my finger there maybe way too small to pick up I'm not sure I think the focusing may foul if I go too close but it is a tiny little one right there yeah, so that's, that's that. So these are ammonite nodules, as I say. That's um, a nodule which is what they commonly would call a multi-block or a deathbed. When you get so many of them, different sizes in one block. These are individual ones, obviously, that are going along. Um, and then you get the, the, the common nodule of ammonite nodule, which is a bit like this. And you can clearly see, virtually, the whole ammonite is there. A um, little bit of damage there. Um, and obviously you just have to do a bit of pen work to get rid of the rock in the middle there. Uh, these are all called Dactylocereus, which is the common one that you get around here in Yorkshire. And the nodules even come slightly different sizes, but they're all made out of rock, obviously, and uh, yeah, and you can clearly see. It's a, it's a telltale, I and mean, rock don't have that sort of shape on it on the edge. As soon as you see that, you know there's an ammonite inside. You know, and there's one there, one there, another one there. This one's an unusual one because it's a double. You can see there's one, one below and one at the top. Um, yeah, so again, a bit of work needed on that one. And then this one here, it's got a bit of damage on this. This is a bit missing, but you know, sometimes I take these home for the kids. I may not have a centre in that one because it's quite dished out already there, so... You know, even this size, they tend to not have centres on. Um, and the pyrite, as the name suggests, iron pyrite, and it can go rusty. And this one is a good example. Yeah, there's an ammonite in there, but it isn't the same colour, obviously, as all of the other rock, which may have pyrite in it. But this is more iron-based pyrite, and obviously that can go rusty. So sometimes we have to preserve them and look after them a bit better. Another little bit inside that one, another nodule. Sometimes nodules, uh, when you just sort of do a nice little cut on the bottom, make them flat so they stand up. Um, by the time you've removed all the rock, you make a bit of a feature out of it. Um, this way, what happens when the sea gets hold of something like this, and it literally smooths it all off. But even that, if you look at it hard, you can see right around the edge there where the fossil is and where the sea is literally eroding it away. Um, this again, 
another one hiding in a rock waiting to come out um, this one's unusual what you have found uh, it could be a fish bone again very small uh, I don't know if you can pick that up but it's literally there's a, a band of it runs right through that it's a bit like a sandwich really it's like a sandwich of two different rocks and then you've got obviously it's, it's been trapped it's been fossilised and encapsulated inside there so we need to look at that a bit closer give it a clean up when we get home and identify it and the same with this one I mean it's got the sort of telltale shape as a, of a coprolite coprolite is just a flash word for poo um, even though it's poo it's uh, it's rock so it don't smell <laughs> it ain't poo no more but uh, loads and loads of little tiny uh, shell looking objects in there so you know if it is poo I don't know again more research needed on that I've never seen fossilized uh, creatures all, all put together like that and ended up in that shape so again I'll have to have a look at that one this is just an imprint of an ammonite um, you know, which uh, is a Dactyserius again, which is a common one for around here. Um, taking that one home because obviously, you know, it's a solid bit of rock, it's quite stable. Um, th this is what it's like if you pop these middles out of, of these ammonites, you know, the, the, this is a bit that's literally popped out. And, you know, the ammonite that's inside it, you end up with this what, like negative. Uh, but sometimes, if they're fairly complete like this, you can take them home. Kids love them, give them a clean up and that, and you can sort of push plasticine or play dough into it and make your own ammonite at home. So, another little thing for the kids to do. This is a section of an ammonite, but as you can see, a rather large section. Um, it's the dark area in here that we're looking at, and it's actually a very large section. It's been very heavily water worn, and obviously, it's all smashed up. But uh, yeah, you can, you can, you can, well, you may or you may not be able to make out. That, that is actually a very large section of a very big ammonite. These are called Hildeceras, which is uh, an ammonite uh, around this area. This has got this sheen to it, which again has got pyrite. Again, no middle. You can see just how thin it goes right through the middle there. Um, you know, it's weird. You get some perfect uh, preservation detail on some of this, but then because the middle, I don't know. I think it's to do with pressure. It gets crushed, the middle not being so thick. It can't stand up to all that pressure under the rock and it's, it just degrades and falls apart in no time at all. Again, these are all nodules. Another big section of ammonite there. Another Hildeceras, I think, which is, uh, you know, it's got this uh, wood, like the boring uh, insects and the rest of it. In, it's getting old of it and the sea's totally degrading it and making it fall apart. But sometimes you can cut these through their length uh, because uh, in here, you have crystals. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you can make that out. These little crystals. This is all. This is all crystal through here. It, it all looks dirty because obviously it's been on the beach and it's been rolling around. But obviously, if you cut right the way through the whole thing and you reveal it, open it up, uh, the patterns inside can be quite beautiful and they do polish up really, really nice. You can turn what essentially looks like an ugly bit of rock into a thing of beauty. And they even sell them on the internet at stupid prices and all. That's what I'm going to be doing with most of these bits. I mean, them the by themselves. They're not really much, but if you actually split them and you reveal the crystals inside, then that's what you're going to get. And certainly with a Yvette's classic uh, find of the day, which is phenomenal, is this, uh, which is called a Philoceris, which is uh, an ammonite from this region. And it's just absolutely lustered gold. I don't know if you can catch that in the image there. Um, and obviously this is the inner chambers can sort of just work out the inner chambers all of the white here it's all crystal uh, this is the other side of it oh it's a bit heavy and it's got quite a lot of shell detail on it I'm trying to get the light on it so you can sort of see it you know, the keel's perfect shape it's all in good condition and then even more spectacular is in at the end here right at the end I don't know if you can make that out that white bit that is all crystal as well and there's a lot of it now, if that was cut, literally like that, like a big sliver right the way through it, it no doubt would reveal a really impressive uh, crystalline structure, and it'd look very nice. But, as it is, just standing up like that, once it's all been cleaned up and polished, I think 
that's how Yvette would like it to be remembered as well. Forgot to mention the bellamites. These are bellamites here. Uh, they look like pencils or bullets, but uh, they're actually the guards uh, of an ancient um, Jurassic Cretaceous squid like creature. Uh, these ones are quite small, they can get quite large. Um, this, is, this is basically the guard that goes uh, in the body chambers of the squid because the squid obviously being a soft bodied creature and it sort of protects the squid a bit if it's, someone tries to eat it. So that's a single one there which would look quite nice uh, and it's already got quite a shine to it just, just rubbing it with your finger. But again that's all solid crystal, all the bellamites, they're all solid crystal. The only way you see them is because they're crystal. Um, you can get again an individual one like the ammonites um, which is like this one all by itself or you can get what's known as a deathbed where obviously some cataclysmic event happened wiped out all the dinosaurs as well as all the sea creatures at the same time who knows what happened but we know something did happen because all of these sections here are uh, bellamites which are all right next to each other in all different angles so they were going up to each other down to each other you know left and right they were going everywhere um, but they're all in a line. They're usually in a line like this because the, the tide, when it washes them, they all tend to, you know, all wash together. When you get really big ones of these, I don't know if you can work that out, on this big one here, right on the end, um, this big one here, on the end it sort of flattens out a little bit. It gets really wide. And what happens is at the end there, you have a thing called a fragma cone. It's actually the bit where it actually joins onto the... Uh, the, the actual soft body part of the animal itself. The other end of it goes off to a point, really, really uh, pointy, and that's what that little one is there. It's still got the point on it. I don't know if you can see that there. Uh, but you can pick these up in the sand all by themselves sometimes, just floating about. Not floating, don't float, it's stone. Cut, re-edit that one. Um, yeah, but you can see that there's points on this one as well, and all that. Now, these fragma cones, which are at this end, the opposite end, the pointy end, um, they splay out. Now you can imagine on this one it will probably be I don't know, about twice the size. But then I found this on the beach and this actually is a fragma cone. Well sea worn uh, but it is a fragma cone of a bellamite. So you can only imagine just how big the bellamite was that this belonged to. So you know it would have probably gone, I don't know, 330 centimetres maybe. And that's only the, the, the bit inside the body. So then the actual creature, they reckon, you know, if you go online and you have a look, if you've got a fragma cone that big and you've got the rest of the bellamite, you know, 30 centimetres long, then that will give you a squid that's approaching sort of two metres in length and they're sort of approaching the height of an average man. So, yeah, they were, they were pretty big. Everything around them that time wanted to eat you. No wonder the man weren't about then. Right, that hopefully is it. Um, sorry, forgot the bellamites, done everything else. So that really sums up three hours at Saltwick Bay today. We did actually see a dinosaur footprint as well, which you saw earlier in the video. And there was also some photographs taken, which may not have been on the video. So all that leaves me to do is to say thank you for watching. I hope you found it enjoyable. And if you did, like and subscribe by hitting the button as they all say the next video hopefully will be more professional than this i hope you enjoyed it let me know